Hurricane season 2024 is over. It brought 18 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and five U.S. hurricane landfalls. Four of the hurricanes hit Florida. The season was a hyperactive one. Above average ocean temperatures and extra rising air thanks to a La Nina combined to make it easier for storms to form. But now, on November 30th, the season is officially done. It's time to pick up the pieces and get ready for next season. Alberto, the first storm, didn't form until June 19th. That made it the latest start to hurricane season in a decade. But then came Beryl, which formed on July 28th east of the Windward Islands. It rapidly intensified into the earliest Category 4 on record, and then the earliest Category 5 on record. It was also the farthest south forming Category 4. It hit Cariacao, Grenada on July 1st with 150 mile per hour winds, then Tulum, Mexico on July 5th. Barrel slammed Houston on July 8th with 80 to 90 mile per hour winds and a foot of rain. I was there for that. Shoreside gusts of 100 miles per hour piled a surge against the coastline as well. This storm also produced 68 tornadoes from Texas and Louisiana all the way towards Buffalo, New York. Then came Debbie. It hit the Florida Big Bend near Steenhatchee on August 5th as a Category 1. Francine made landfall in southern Louisiana as a Category 2 on September 11th. Downtown New Orleans was placed under a flash flood emergency. 8.43 inches of rain fell in two days' time. I couldn't even get to my hotel due to the bad flooding. Every business I've seen is below water. The folks up there, I mean, everyone's going through only three, four miles an hour, so it's not great a wake. I'm basically trusting that they're above. So, yeah, but I, I honestly do not love this. And then Helene. Helene was a different beast. It rapidly intensified in the Gulf of Mexico between September 24th and 26th, then hit the Big Bend of Florida once again as a Category 4. But it didn't feel like a Category 4 at landfall though, at least wind-wise. It felt like a low-end 3. Its bigger impact was farther inland. Its winds shredded forests in the Appalachians. It dumped 11.12 inches of rain on Metro Atlanta, prompting a flash flood emergency for the downtown. And it brought catastrophe to western parts of the Carolinas. Tropical moisture streaming north ahead of Helene interacted with the cold front, spawning prolific downpours even before the storm actually arrived. 15 to 30 inches fell in total. Nearly 200 people died in extreme floods. Interstate 40 was washed out and is still inaccessible. And as winter comes, the humanitarian crisis continues to grow. Milton went from a tropical depression on October 5th to a monstrous Category 5 just two days later. It whizzed through the southern Gulf of Mexico like a buzzsaw with 180 mile per hour winds. Its air pressure dipped down to 897 millibars, which basically means it was missing about 12% of the atmosphere's ambient mass out its middle. That created the vacuum effect that spurred the fierce inward winds. At one point, its eye was only three miles wide. Milton hit Florida as a Category 3. It tore the roof off Tampa's Tropicana Field, flooded Venice, and sent 115 mile per hour gusts roaring between buildings in downtown Sarasota. At one point, a bench flew off a hotel roof next to me. Oh! Oh my gosh! Holy, did you guys see that at home? A barrage of tornadoes tore through South Florida too before Milton made landfall. It was Florida's most significant outbreak. You can see thunderstorms sparking up in Milton's outer bands. Now the good news is that hurricane season's over and the US has never been hit by a hurricane outside of hurricane season. The bad news, hurricane season begins in just 151 days. But my radar will be there. I will be too. And that is a promise. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.